Good afternoon. My name is Ben, and this is Oli. This is Oli, ah! and yeah, he's my my helper today. As you can see, we're standing out by the top of my septic tank that we installed last year. It's kind of a jungle around here, but we've uh, got some work to do on that. But for right now, uh, we're concerned with getting the wiring hooked up on it. So I'm going to show you the step by step process for uh, what you need to do and uh, how it's going to be set up. So firstly, we have this wire here coming out of this conduit that comes from the house. And this is a 12-2 uh, weather resistant or underground uh, burial uh, cable that is on one dedicated 20 amp circuit inside the house. This is the power that is ultimately going to feed the pump. We have one additional wire coming from the house. If I can get it pulled out here. Uh, this one is a 14 2 wire and this one doesn't uh, carry power so much as it's uh, what the uh, float alarm gets hooked to an audible alarm in the basement that will go off if and when the septic tank uh, quits working uh, or the septic pump quits working so those are the two wires that come all the way from the house one 14 2 wire for the alarm and one 12 2 wire for the pump itself. Now, uh, I should mention that some people opt to put an alarm that's on the outside of the house that's a, like a visual flashing light uh, that would be out next to their septic tank mounted onto the post, uh, and that is an option that is available as well. I'd rather have uh, the alarm in the house uh, so that it's, uh, I don't know, it just seems to make sense. Plus. The house is uh, kind of hard to see through the trees, so that's another reason why you might want to put it in the house instead of squirrels up there, uh, instead of uh, outside. So those are the two wires that are coming from the house. Now uh, the wires coming out of the tank, I'll show you inside here so that you can kind of get an idea of what we what we're talking about. As you can see, there's the top of the pump right there. And there are two float switches. You can see the gray one right there is the switch for the actual pump. And then the, above that, there's a black switch that is for uh, the alarm. So then once it gets up to here, uh, the wires are just taped to the side of the drain pipe coming up from the pump. And then when they get up to here, they go out through this piece of conduit, which is just a 90 degree a uh, long sweep, uh, two inch 90. And we have the three wires coming up there and I'll show you what they do up top. Here's the three wires right here. Uh, this one is just a simple open and close for the alarm. And then we have one of these wires that is a power going to the pump uh, directly to power the pump on. And the other one is the uh, float switch that turns the pump on and off as you can see they're plugged into each other one behind the other so uh, This one right here is the switch and this one right here is just for the pump So now what we're going to be doing is getting a box mounted here So that we have a good way to keep all of this stuff protected from the weather and make our connections in a way that is approved to code so here's the enclosure we're going to be using. Now this is an enclosure that we will be able to lock close, this little locking clip here. And uh, that, in our area, uh, that allows the circuit that goes out to this pump to be a standard breaker with uh, no, uh, no ground fault or arc fault, uh, which is beneficial uh, because it's less likely to nuisance trip, causing uh, problems with your septic system, obviously. So what we'll have is a receptacle box mounted inside of here that those wires can plug into, and then uh, the junction for that uh, alarm can just be anywhere in the box because that's just low voltage. We're going to work on getting this mounted on the post here next. All right, well, you better go. So here's the box mounted here now. And... Uh, I am taking a video! And here is the electrical box. I mounted that right center in the back here up towards the top. Go! Woo! And uh, down here, we're about ready to make a notch. We're going to make a notch so that these uh, cords can be pushed into that notch right there. And then the, the cover can close. And uh, the reason we're going to do that instead of drilling a hole is that we'd have to drill a really big hole in the bottom to get this through there. And then we'll use a little bit of duct seal to seal this up once we're done. 
Uh, and then we also have to bring those power wires in through the bottom as well. So we're going to go ahead and notch that out now. So we're using a metal blade so this is a little bit more uh, fine so we don't tear up the box too much. Make sure we get our wires out of the way. And then we will go ahead and make our cut. See if we can just break it out of here now. Oh yeah, no problem. Well, let's make sure it's the right width for the cords to fit into the notch. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So we should be able to get all three of these in here and then close the door at the same time. No problem. So we got our wires brought through here using a connector down there. And uh, this could be done a number of different ways, but uh, that is how we chose to do it here. Now we got our uh, outlet installed here, or I mean, not all the way, but this is a weather resistant and tamper resistant outlet. And uh, this is gonna be in more extreme conditions, obviously, so it's a good idea to invest in that, I think. And also pay attention to the direction that this plug comes off of here. Notice how I have the neutral prong on top, right there. And when this is plugged in, the cord will be going down. It's just gonna make everything fit in the box a little bit better this way. Good to go. So we're gonna put the cover on. So there's what it's looking like. As you can see, I just kind of tucked the little bit of extra wire I had in there so that I have future flexibility. So uh, now we've got our low voltage uh, or our alarm uh, wire that we're going to strip back here. So right here we've got our, uh, our switch wire coming from inside the tank. And we're going to hook this to the low voltage or the, uh, the wire coming from the house. So we will twist these together here now and put a wire knot on it. So there's our alarm. Uh, we're going to go ahead and start by plugging in our uh, switched plug. I think we're going to do it right here on this side. Careful. And then we'll take our pump plug and plug that right into that. So I think I'm going to have enough room here because my door has a little bit of a little bit of a uh, deeper spot there so I think it's close fine and now we're gonna just uh, wrap up the excess cable in here so that uh, it's nice and tidy all right this is the best I was able to do getting this uh, tidied up in here so we've got all of our excess cable tidied up in there and now we can close this and it fits perfectly fine uh, there's an important note that I should make do not take this conduit coming out of your septic tank and connect it into this box directly. And the reason for that is you'll have all kinds of sewer gas coming out of this pipe here and you will have major problems with corrosion and everything just kind of rotting inside of this box. Yeah, you can try it. So uh, just make sure that you don't connect that directly. And now what we're gonna do here is we're gonna use a big ball of duct seal. It's called duct seal. Can you say duct seal? I used to call it goop. <laughs> it's goop? Is that what you said? Yeah. Oh, nice. Uh, here's the duct seal when it's uh, just kind of applied here. It's just kind of pliable so you can uh, always take it out and uh, pull new wires through or do what you have to do. Uh, as you can see right here, I've also put some duct seal around there. And uh, looking, we are cool. looking good here. So we just got to clip off these zip ties. And we are just about ready to test everything out. We do have to install the uh, alarm system in the house still, so we'll look at that in a little bit here. But uh, this is pretty much it for what's required outside, and then we'll just want to lock this closed. Uh, and I'll put a link in the description to uh, this exact box if I can. So if you're looking for one, or you have the same project that you have to accomplish, uh, we should be able to get you set up with that. I'd look it. Need a snake. Nice, man. Here we are inside, and I got this thing hooked up. It's uh, just going to show you what it looks like, though, because I told you I would. Now, right here is that wire that comes from out there. This is the 14-2 wire that is from our, uh, our alarm float out in the tank. And you can see that's connected to these two terminals here on the bottom of this uh, pump alarm. 
So uh, what this thing will do, it's got a couple different features. Uh, when it goes off, obviously, it's going to make loud beeping noise. And it has a silence button, so you can silence it once you have acknowledged that. Uh, on the side right here, you can open this little cover up, and it does have a battery backup, so that uh, in case you lost power or something, it would still be able to give you an alarm. You're supposed to replace that battery once per year. So this thing is just mounted up here with a couple of screws, and it plugs into the wall right here. So that's how that works, and it's just very simple. It closes the circuit, and then the alarm goes off. We can I can demonstrate it to you here by just taking my electrical uh, pliers, and if I short across these two terminals, it's, oh man, that's so loud. Uh, then it, then it goes off. So uh, there you have it. That's the uh, that's the alarm system. I will link in the description to a similar alarm. And uh, if you are interested, you can purchase it there. Uh, I have a junction box right here where I have a 12 to uh, indoor wire coming to uh, where it meets my outdoor wire. That way I could use uh, just regular 12 to wire over to my panel. That just saved a little bit of money so I didn't have to use that. Uh, more expensive outdoor cable uh, inside, so I just junctioned it right there. This uh, top one, number two, is the breaker for the septic, and as you can see, that's a 20 amp breaker, and it's just a regular traditional breaker because of the way we have it set up outside. Uh, we don't have to use a ground fault breaker or arc fault, so it should be good to go. Right. I figured out how we can test it. We can just uh, simply unplug the uh, the pump cord right here. This is the actual power for the pump, and then we can plug it in here, and we should be able to see it work. So, uh, Oli, you want to look down the hole again and see if something turns on? You tell me if something turns on, okay? Ready? Yeah. It's working! Looks like I need to tighten my uh, turn out fitting there a little bit more. Let's uh, see if we can manage that. Oh! There we go. If they don't touch it, don't touch the phone. Don't want it to fall in. So yeah, it works! So the water you see that's splashing back down there, there's a hole drilled in the bottom of that pipe that goes out so that this uh, doesn't sit full of water. Pretty cool, huh, Oli? Mm -hmm. This is all groundwater in here at the moment, so it's uh, not that... <laughs> it's not that uh, oh, toxic yet, because literally... The only water in there has just been water that's been leaking in, I think, from groundwater. So, pretty exciting. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it. That's a 120 volt septic pump, and it should work pretty fantastic. So, if this video helped you out, please rate it up and feel free to subscribe down below for more details or for more videos like this one. And you can also click that little bell icon to be notified of future videos. Thanks again, and we will talk to you in the next one. Say bye. Bye. Say thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. Are you tired?